I'm Tyler, you're watching Tyler Willis's channel, and welcome to the Drunk Edition of I'm Telling Tyler, a write-in show where you can ask me questions, send me the latest tea, and so long as it's at least Lolita adjacent, you can send your tea and or queries to I'm Telling Tyler at gmail.com. So without further ado, let's get to our first submission. They didn't give me a name, so we're going to call them Mochi. And Mochi says, Hey Tyler, I'm not sure if this will be put on your channel or not, but if I'm being honest, I just need a way out. My boyfriend, who is now my ex, started dating about a month ago. I've always been the type of girl who would worry about what others would think. Well, two weeks ago, I decided to tell him about Lolita fashion. And what better way to tell him than by showing him. By the way, the dress I wore was the only Lolita dress I owned. So I met him up at a subway to show him. When I got there, I was nervous to the point that I was shaking, and you would have thought that he left me in an iceberg. He f <laughs> What? I'm supposed to be the drunk one in this situation. Why are there so many goddamn typos? Mochi, I love you, but have some fucking mercy on me. Anyway, it says, so I met him up at a subway. To show him. Why is that in its own sentence? Forget it. Anyway, so you met you met your boyfriend up in a subway to show him your f***ing dress. The only dress you own, this is very important apparently. When I got there, I was nervous to the point that I was shaking. You would have thought that he left me in an iceberg. He finally came in and I met him halfway. The store was filled with other customers. He had asked me, and I quote, what the fuck is this? I told him everything I knew about the fashion and he then corrected me. He said, no, this is what you wear if you want a pedo to buy you the hotel room. And he continues to yell at me and tells me I was disgusting and it was my fault that this relationship was over. He then picked up my root beer and threw it on my dress. I still have not gotten the stain out, so if you know how to, please let me know. I went home in tears, of course, but as if being publicly humiliated wasn't enough for him, he then decided to take it to my place of business. The higher-ups are older people at my job, so they had no idea what Lolita was. He had told them that I had a second job as a street worker, and that I should not be allowed in. So long story short, I am now fired. Because the store I worked for did not need a hooker in their workspace. I have found a new job. I have not told them about Lolita, and I'm scared to. Thank you so much. I would love to hear your advice if you have any at all. Thank you. Have you considered arson? Since I'm drunk and very liable to drop details at any moment, Let's summarize what you told me. You had a boyfriend who is now your ex. You started dating a month ago. He assaulted you in a subway station with a root beer. He threw that shit at the only lobby the dress you owned. And when that wasn't enough, he called your place of work and got you f***ing fired. That is some f***ing Kevin energy, okay? I'm presuming that's the male equivalent of the Karen. What he did to you was so beyond the pale. I feel like, and maybe this is just me, that there should be steps between I don't like your outfit and yeeting an entire beverage at someone's person, okay? I am glad that you got another job. Obviously, you have since moved on. It was not okay for them to f***ing fire you for wearing Lolita. Like, that's ridiculous. What kind of hooker wears this shit? Hookers know their clothes are gonna get torn off in 0.5 seconds. This shit is too expensive to end up on a cheap halfway house floor. I don't know if you've ever stayed in a halfway house or a place of ill repute, if you will, but I accidentally booked one for a goth trip in New Orleans, and let me tell you, you don't want anything in this shade hitting that f***ing floor. Honestly, you don't even want to touch it with your feet. If you can levitate, highly recommend. There were stains and colors I had not seen before. But to reel this back into the realm of actual advice that you asked for, my advice to you in the future is to run Lolita by your potential dating candidate before you actually date them. Because honestly, Lolita is a perfect barrier to entry. Because Lolita is one of those things that's just weird enough to normies that if you get a reaction right off the bat, you are actually weeding out people that you don't want to date in the first place. They're fucking boring. And not only are they boring, half of these dudes look like a fucking thumb. They have 
have the same haircut that their mommy gave them in f middle school. They don't know where the f jelly bean is if you catch my goddamn drift. And even if you drew them a goddamn map, they would still not be able to find a personality. What I'm trying to say is you are too good for this absolute trash fire that I've just read about. In summary, this might actually lead to you being able to use your interest in Lolita as a culling system to get rid of people who aren't worth your fucking time. Because if they react this negatively to something so fucking cute and sweet and perfectly fine as a hobby, how are they gonna react down the road to anything that's much more serious? I know I've given this advice before, but I'm not kidding when I say that Lolita is the tip of the iceberg for most people's interests or issues or whatever. It's a cute, fluffy princess style. Life has much more in store beyond petticoat and pastels is what I'm trying to say. So if he can't even get over cute little ponies and candy and pink deer, what is he gonna do when something much more important happens in your life? The man sounds like an absolute coward. He freaked out at square one. What a weakling. What a metaphorical manlet is what I'm saying. I know I should pull it down. So frankly, if we're gonna be honest, and we're gonna be mature about this. I hope he gets hit by a bus. So finally, you deserve better. What happened to you was absolutely fucked up. And my advice to you one more time, run it by your potential dating prospects before you give them the f***ing time of day before you give them your time or your presence or your emotional investments. Jesus Christ, if a guy is so f***ing stupid and boring and sad that he can't handle his girlfriend having a hobby, you don't want to date that guy. Honestly, he sounds like the kind of guy that thinks adventurous is jerking off with his left hand. My advice to you is to live your best Lolita life. Buy all the dresses you want, decorate your room to the f***ing nines, and absolutely bulldoze people like him out of your f***ing life before they can even put down roots, because all they will do is drag you down. Your best move from this point on is never, ever, ever to put up with this shit ever again. Because you deserve better than someone who is going to talk to you this way and dismiss and disrespect you in this manner. Do not put up with this normie f nonsense. These people are too f tepid to deserve your attention. So thank you, Mochi. And moving on to our next submission. Our next submission is from Bonbon. Bon, and Bonbon bon says, Hi, Tyler. You can call me Bonbon. Bon. My pronouns are they, them. I am a non-binary sweet Lolita who's just starting out in the fashion. I only got the chance to wear Lolita a couple times before quarantine hit. Once restrictions started to lift, I was eager to go out in Lolita again, but I hit a bit of a stumbling block. During quarantine, I grew a rather luxurious beard that I'm quite attached to, but I'm having trouble working around my facial hair when it comes to Lolita. Do you have any ideas or examples for styling a beard in a Lolita cord? Preferably without hiding it. After COVID ends, I doubt I will ever want to wear a mask again, lol. On a more serious note, I want to be out and proud about my transness, but it also makes me nervous. Lolita is kind of the epitome of hyperfemininity, and I'm afraid that my beard might spoil the look. On the other hand, Lolita is often miscategorized as fetish wear by ignorant people, and Lolita spaces can even be invaded by fetishists. Cough. Sissies. Cough. Would a beard in Lolita make the situation worse? Yours in frilly pastel sibling-hood, Bon Bon. All right, to quickly summarize Bon Bon, because I'm f hammered at this point, you are a non-binary sweet Lolita. You just started the fashion, you have a beard, and you're worried about adding to the misconception of like fetishists or sissies invading the space, and you're wanting to know if it's okay to wear a beard with Lolita. So to quickly answer your question and then get into my diatribe, I believe hyperfemininity should be accessible to fucking everyone. That means both cis women and men, trans women and men, and the entire NB community. And given the absolute swath of different physical appearances of the people I just listed, this means that if you want to wear a beard and Lolita at the same time, 
I believe that you should be allowed to do it. I absolutely understand where you're coming from when it comes to like sissies and Lolita giving the bad vibes, but I would also say that in my experience, most sissies I have witnessed, even though they look like they just crawled out of a dumpster and peed on a raccoon, surprisingly, they don't usually have facial hair. So even though I have been on hyper alert predator watch when it comes to f***ing sissy fetishists invading this f***ing community and asking for pictures from children, usually, in my experience, the most they are working with is a 5 o'clock shadow. Even though they do usually look like something that should be contained in the confines of a landfill, they do usually shave their beards. They are usually semi-clean shaven at the bare minimum. Which means when it comes to your beard, you should actually be in the clear. And that's coming from someone who has seen their fair share of preverts. <laughs> and frankly, I think a beard in Lolita is appropriately transgressive because Lolita's actual spirit is hyper femininity for the femme appreciating by the femme appreciating. Everything I've learned about Lolita fashion for the near 11 years that I've been in it has taught me that it is such an open and accepting and kind space. It does not discriminate. It does not withhold itself from people, no matter their physical characteristics. And while it is a hyper feminine environment, the community that is formed around it is not interested in traditional gender representation. And the reason I bring up the word specifically traditional gender representation is because no woman, even in the Victorian period from which Lolita is inspired from, was wearing anything that looks remotely like this, okay? There's a certain amount of camp to Lolita. There's a certain accessibility of the hyper-feminine, and I believe that should be open to anyone and everyone, regardless of their grooming procedures, okay? Unless you are actively growing fungi from your elbows, you should be able to wear Lolita fashion. And the only reason I say the fungi is the exception because maybe you should go to a doctor before you put on your JSK, okay? Maybe address that before you worry about wearing Lolita. If you have an active fungi colony and they're honestly gaining sentience and getting ready to launch themselves into space, maybe address that first before you start sinking all your money into a pastel princess nonsense fashion. But. When it comes to your beard, anyone who is worth your time is not going to give a f that you have a beard, okay? No one's going to give a f that you have some facial hair. And frankly, it would be incredibly rude for anyone to bring up your facial hair unless it was absolutely unkempt and encroaching on the environment around it. Unless your beard is trying to root itself into the topsoil to the extent that it's become an invasive species, it is no one's business that you have decided to wear a beard with Lolita. Lolita's initial mission statement was entirely wrapped around the fact of subverting gender roles. It is a fashion that was focused on making its wearers happy first and foremost. And what could be more in line with that subversive tradition than wearing your beard proudly and loudly with as much glitter or as little glitter or as many bows or as little bows as you desire with Lolita fashion. So as far as I'm concerned, you lumberjack it up at your discretion and anyone that gives you f***ing guff about it is not worth your f***ing time. And if you're not opposed, maybe put a bow or two in it. Some glitter, something sparkly. Go forth, wear this amazing fashion with your full beard, and show others that it is perfectly okay to present in a way that is not necessarily binary, because there is no problem with being exactly who you are in this fashion, because that's what it was built for. No one with the personality of a pair of khaki pants wears Lolita. You are in good fucking company. Go forth and represent others who might grow their mustaches to impressive lengths and in equally strange and astonishing shapes. That is where I'm gonna end it. Thank you again, Bonbon. Bon. This has been Tyler. You've been watching the Tyler Willis channel. Almost said Scarfing Scarves, it's not called that anymore. I was also astonished that I was the first one to take the Tyler Willis URL. You've been watching I'm Telling Tyler, and I would like to thank my patrons for being amazing and for some reason deciding that my content is what the internet truly needs as opposed to near anything else of value. And should you like to join their number, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews 
For more content that I don't recommend you watch in any capacity, sober or otherwise. Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next time.